Here is a 2024 BMW X1 xDrive 28i in mineral white over black Sensatec interior. Last year, we received a full refresh, which made it longer, wider, and more sport-oriented. This year, we're receiving a M35i, which has 71 horsepower more than this, but it's still lower than a JCW Mini Cooper. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm gonna go over some pros and cons, the problem that I have with the X1 in comparable rivals, LED headlights and daytime runnings with 8.1 inches of clearance. The satin aluminum is because of the X-Line package, which goes around the grill, which is an active grill shutter for the kidney grill. The lower will get the parking sensors. And comparing this to Mercedes, Audi, and Genesis, it's going to look a little bit more athletic because of that refresh. And underneath the hood is still going to house the 2.0 liter BMW twin power turbo, but we've increased 13 horsepower more than the prior gen with 241 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque paired to a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission, achieving 25 MPGs for the city and 34 MPGs for the highway. We have the upgraded 19 inch wheels. Gloss black elements is gonna surround the fenders and the satin aluminum will come into the side because of the X-Line. Going against the rivals, even when you're considering the Mini Cooper, if you go up to the JCW, it's gonna be faster than the M35i, but it also weighs over 180 pounds less than the BMW variant. And because of the increase in length from last year's refresh, it will have a little bit more space in the interior comparing to Mercedes and Audi, a little bit more of an open design design cockpit with the payload that's over 1100 pounds standard led taillights and the lower is going to have the boomerang for the satin aluminum reverse sensors with the reverse camera it sits up a little bit higher with the gloss black elements with no exhaust outlets exposed they'll be tucked underneath the gloss black is going to surround the lower roof spoiler keeping a sporty style for the compact SUV. Power lift gate going into 25.7 cubic feet. The bumpers will come out a little bit. You have a storage nook that is tucked in the sides with a 12 volt charger. Underneath the floor, we have the option with the spare tire. The privacy cover is easy to remove. And when you look, you'll expose the bag holders here on the side, but you still will have to go to the back door to increase cargo to 46.9 cubic feet. It does fold down flat. This is the X-Drive 28i. We need to go inside, start it up, so you can hear that exhaust though. Ten-way power seat adjustment with manual cushion extensions. The convenience package adds the pano moonroof and the wireless charger. Headroom and leg room. The refresh last year made this vehicle a little bit more pleasant for the front, especially the way they have cleaned up the dashboard layout. We get the open wood pours with the ambient lighting that's going to surround it. Sense of tech interior for the dash. That's part of the X line. Curve one panel. We have a 10.7 touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. This is the iDrive 9. Put it into reverse and we get a reverse camera with full trajectory, front and rear parking sensors going into the gloss black elements, the wireless charging pad and the key fob for the X1. The rocker is going to be stationed on top with my mode. So when you push onto here, you have three different driving modes select. Underneath is more of a larger pass-through with the NBA lighting. USB ports, it's gonna be more sporty that opens up into a long storage pocket that you could fit a slim remote control <laughs> with a leather wrap steering wheel, three spoke multi-function. No paddle shifts, the gauge cluster goes through an array of content for the driver, and you can change the layout. Door panel and dash integrate in together with the ambient lighting in the wood. It's gonna be more sport drive, one touch up and down for all the windows. A large storage pocket with a auto dimming rear view mirror and a pano moonroof that's part of the convenience package. Headroom and legroom. 
storage behind both of the front seats with a storage net usb ports with air vents and a little storage tray for a smartphone cup holders with an armrest door panel is going to have the sporty materials that's found in the front with a long and deep storage pocket and a beverage holder carved out sliding into the center the floor is not completely flat you will be sharing feet butt leg and shoulder space but you are in an x1 in headroom it's actually really good for somebody that's over six foot tall. 13 horsepower, more than the prior gen that was received last year. So 241 horsepower, 6.2 seconds, zero to 60 with 295 pound-feet of torque, seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission, no paddle shifts, here we go. The exhaust note will filter in because we have it in sport mode. And that's through the icon sounds. Now some dynamics. There is some body roll. It's not as airtight. It's still playful, but for a standard all wheel drive, it just feels a little bit out of the place. And a lot of that is derived because it's 57.1, 42.9 weight distribution. So it's a little bit further away from the 50-50 that BMW usually gets. Visibility is good. And you can see, you'll just kind of slide all over the place with this one. And the big problem that I have with the base trim is we're in BMW, but we're not getting standard heated seats. We don't get a standard wireless charging pad, standard heads up display. There's just a lot of features that you're lacking and yet you have to pay to get them. Don't put the MSRP under 40 grand if you're gonna do this. I understand we got an increase in power from the prior gen and they did do a refresh. We got a new rocker. The center is more cleaned up, a lot more space, but going into BMW, you need to have these options standard because they have a Mini Cooper, which is more of a base trim. Now, thinking of the Mini Cooper, JCW, it's actually less expensive than the M35i and it reaches 60 quicker and it's lighter so it's a little bit more agile giving a closer 50-50 weight distribution. So when I'm thinking what they've done with the X1, it's great as a total package, meaning you're getting a lot more in room for the interior, some more amenities. But when you're looking at comparable rivals, anybody that has a lower trim vehicle the higher trim always outweighs it and gives you these features standard. Going against Mercedes and Audi, they're going to have a little bit more of the classic luxury. It's going to be a little bit more of a plush interior. This is gonna be a little bit more sporty for the seats, but it contours to your body well. You will feel some of the imperfections. Turn radius, it's actually pretty tight. I'm gonna to have to give her a gas. And it does have quite a bit of lag whenever you're pushing the gas. And when you're pairing it with a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission, you're expecting it to be a lot more faster and a little bit less lag off the line and in between traffic. You sit up high enough though, it feels longer and wider which when you're thinking this is the smallest SUV BMW makes, that's a good thing because you're gonna have optimal interior space and cargo capacity. You have plenty of storage. I like that they optimize having a pass-through because they have thought about the longevity of this vehicle. Going into the Rivals, I feel like the Audi is going to shift the best with the Tiptronic 8-speed automatic transmission just because the way they pair it with their turbocharged engine but when you're at this variant, all of them are going to be a little bit slower, more of that everyday drive, but you still capture some of the fun to drive spirit with the BMW. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 BMW X1 X Drive 28i for our car review.